Today I'm going to be talking about something that you guys ask me about quite often, and that is how is the home ranch laid out, how are the corrals laid out, and where is everything in relation to everything else? I know in the channels that I watch, like Just a Few Acres Farm or Country View Acres, I'm familiar with the different areas on their properties, but if I ever went to those places, I would have no idea where anything was or how it's laid out. So today we're gonna walk through and do a virtual tour here, and hopefully by the end of this, you'll have at least a little bit of a better idea of the way things are set up around here. That's what's going on today on Farmer Tyler Ranch. The first building that we're gonna go by here is something that I use mostly just for storage, like salt blocks, things like that. And then this is where my big brooders are as well. So when I get a big batch of chicks and you see me take them into a brooder, that's inside this building. Right now I've got the feed wagon parked out here as well. This isn't a permanent home for it, but at the moment this is out of the way and this is just kind of where it's been sitting all summer. Originally the plan was to park this back at my house, but for whatever reason that just never really happened. And now we're getting close enough to the time of year where I'm probably gonna need it again. Don't be surprised if it just sits here until I start using it. Next to the old garage, there's a little bit of a blank spot here and you can see this is where I've got a bunch of my round bales stacked. Somebody asked in a video fairly recently why I have all these bales stacked outside. Well, the simple answer is because the barn is chock full and I need this many bales to get through the year. So what I end up doing is when I start feeding here, which is probably gonna be in like another month, if I'm lucky, probably gonna be before that, honestly. But when that time comes, I'll start feeding these outside bales first. So as we walk beyond the outside hay, there is a little barnyard here or a place to turn around. This is, you know, if I need to back the stock trailer up to the loading chute or if I need to turn the truck around when I've got a load of hay, this is where all of that is happening. And on the other side of this yard is the barn. The main part of the barn here is about 25 feet wide by 50 feet deep. And as you can see, this thing is filled to the brim with round bales right now. Originally, this was all set up for small square bales. So this is the perfect size to go three blocks wide. The way that we used to be set up, if you've seen older videos, then you actually saw this in operation, but this was a feed bunk here. So, when you were up on top of the stack of the small square bales, you could just throw the hay right down into the bunk feeder here. Instead of having these horizontal boards, these were all angled slats and the cows could just reach in here to eat. This was actually a really efficient and good way to feed the cows and we didn't really need any kind of machinery or anything to do that. Once the hay was in the barn, the rest of it was pretty much done by hand. And I guess the flip side of that is that to get all the square bales in the barn requires a ton of machinery and a lot more work. So you're kind of just, I guess, trading it. All in all, I'm pretty happy with the switch to round bales and I, I don't really see ever going back to square bales because now I've got everything set up to accommodate them. This four pipe fence here used to be bunk feeder. We now have a nice pull-in round bale feeder. I'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute. And then you can see down here where I'm now feeding salt blocks, this is the remnants of that old bunk feeder as well. Eventually what I'd like to do is to make the salt block trough go all the way to the end so that more cattle could get in here and eat. But before I do that, I need to put some more concrete right here because in the winter time, this is so low that they really can't reach their heads in there to get the salt blocks. So this area has changed a lot in the last few years. And now instead of using a long bunk feeder, I'm using this rectangular round bale feeder. And 
the way that this works is I can just pull in here and set one or two bales down and then the cattle can get all around the bales to eat. Right now there's enough room for 18 cows to eat comfortably at this feeder. If I have more cows here and I'm wanting to feed them hay, then I'll usually bale graze out in the field to make sure everybody has equal access to the hay. Or in a pinch, I could put a bale here in this feeder and then another bale in the feed wagon and park that out in the corral somewhere. So far we've been able to make it work, but I've got some different options as far as offering hay to them if I need to. So now walking down the same road that we started on, it goes right next to the barn. You can see I've got a few treasures stored outside here, a couple loader buckets. I've got this red brush here that I need to get put up in the little corral so that the calves have something to rub on. And right now I've got my aerator parked here. I, I feel like this isn't a permanent spot for it, but this actually is where it ends up being parked quite often. So maybe this is a permanent spot for it. And then I've got this great big Rubbermaid water trough that has a giant crack in the side that I've tried multiple times to repair with JB Well, then I, I never have any luck. It'll hold water for like two or three days. And then I don't know if somebody kicks it or what ends up happening, but that crack just splits open again and it starts leaking. So rather than get rid of this, this is sort of like my dumpster now. This is where I throw all my net wrap, empty wasp spray cans, uh, what, uh, whatever other garbage I might be making out here, this is where it goes. And then once or maybe twice a year, I'll bring my little utility trailer down here and get all the stuff out of this and take it down to the dump. So down here on the end of the barn is the working corral. And I am going to talk about how the working corral is laid out, how the cattle flow moves through it. Um, but let me finish kind of going down and covering this area. And then when I talk about the working corral, I want to start from where the cattle would enter it and just sort of walk through the path that they would take and show it to you that way. But just so you know, the working corral is right behind the barn. And just as we get past the working corral, we've got the loading chute, which again, I'll talk about a little bit more when we're talking about that other stuff over there. And right on the other side of the loading chute is the old hog barn which is actually now a bullpen and no longer a hog barn. So if this is a bullpen, why do we call it the hog barn? Well, when my grandparents came to this place originally back in the 50s, my grandpa used to raise sows in this barn and that's why it's called the hog barn because that's what it was originally. In fact, this little cement slab here that I now use for setting the round bales on for the bulls to eat, this I believe was where the sows would farrow because that's the only place that there was concrete in this building and I'm thinking that's probably why. There are certain times of the year when I need to separate the bulls out of the herd and this is what this pen is for. You can notice that it's built pretty stout. We've got pretty thick pipe here and that's the reason for that. It's because I know that bulls are going in here and sometimes they get a little rowdy. So you gotta have a pen that can accommodate that. And the bull pen opens up or leads into what I refer to as the little corral. In the fall, after we wean the calves off of the cows, they'll be eating up in the little corral here so that they're not having to fight with the larger cows to eat hay. Longtime viewers will remember me building this. We've got two round bale feeder setups here because we'll probably be feeding anywhere between 30 and 40 calves at a time in this area. And since these calves are fed with an all you can eat ration, it, they don't need bunk space for every single one at a time. If a calf isn't able to get up to the feeder right away, then he just kind of waits his turn and will get up here when the more dominant calves are full and go to lay down. There are two different ways to get calves into the little corral here. One would be coming through this gate that goes out to the pasture. And then the other is over here on the back side of the bullpen, there is a little alley here that again, when we get over and we're coming into the corral, I can show you where the entrance to this alleyway is. The pasture gate leads out into what I refer to as the little field. This is about two acres. And during the winter time, when the calves are separated from the cows, they will have access to this. And throughout the summertime, 
I will use this two acres as either a bull pasture um, before it's time for them to go in with the cows or I will just add this to the grazing rotation. This year I used the little field to keep the bulls separate prior to breeding season. That way I could just graze them. I didn't have to feed them hay while still keeping them separated from the main herd. And then after they went out for breeding was about the time that I weaned the Bismarck calf and then I used this field to house him and I put Buddy, our, our pet bottle steer, in here with him as well so that he had some company. So this ended up getting like way overgrown because those two really couldn't keep up with it. As we get down here to the end of the little field, there is a gateway that leads into the backfield. Backfield is roughly 12 acres that I've got divided into six different paddocks at around two acres a piece. And as you might suspect, six different paddocks it takes them six days to get across this at the end of the sixth day on a normal grazing rotation the cattle would then go through this gate graze the little field for one day and then when they get done here then they go out into the middle field this middle pasture is about eight acres and this is usually a four day graze. I can do this one of two ways. I can either let them free graze it for four days or I can get some hot wires up here and section this off into four individual paddocks and move them every day over four days to get them over it. And after the cattle get done in the middle field, then they will move right here next door to what I call the front field. The front field is about six acres and it's usually good for a three day graze. I have never tried sectioning this off to do daily moves out here. This has just always been a free graze and it always seems to work fairly well for that. In the future, I probably will at some point do daily moves out here, but I wanted to leave this one open to free graze just because when I was moving wire every day, this gave me a little bit of a break or it gave me time to get my wire set up where the cattle would be going next. Since then, I've decided that it is just worth the money to buy more spools of wire and just leave them set up all year. Yeah, you spend some more money up front, but the amount of time that you save over the summer is just, it, it's, it's a lot. Once the cows are done grazing the front field, you guys have seen this before, we open the, the gate here going to the little field and then the other gate going to the back field and they will run all the way down there and start the whole process over again. So what that works out to is a two week grazing cycle running about one and a half mother cows per acre. So we have come full circle, we're back here in the big corral and now I wanna walk through my working facilities and kinda of show you how that's all laid out. I'm gathering cattle up in the big corral here to work them. They are gonna enter this corral through either this gate going out to the little field, this gate going to the middle field, or this gate going to the front field. And I'm telling you this for a reason. Stick with me. Upon entering the corral, the cattle are most likely gonna go gather up underneath the barn or under the shade tree or get a drink of water whatever they want to do they're going to end up in this area after closing off the gates that they came into then i can now come around and start pushing on them a little bit letting them know that it's time to move because we're doing something and when the cattle realize that i am starting to push on them a little bit or wanting them to move they are naturally going to want to go back to the gate that they entered the corral in and try to get away from me. So what ends up happening is through their natural tendency to escape from me and go out of the corral the way that they came in, they end up down here in this corner again. And that is why the catch funnel comes out of this corner or it's on this side of the corral because we're using their natural instinct to go here to get away from us. And now we've kind of got them where we want them to just sort of sweep them around the corner, walk them up the new fence line that I just built and into the working facility. As the cattle walk down here to the end of the funnel, they are gonna find this alleyway here. And from this alleyway, there's a few different places that I can make them go. First thing that I can get them to do is they can come up catch this alleyway that goes back into the little corral, or I can close off this alleyway and send them to the loading chute if I wanted to put them into the trailer, or I can swing this gate the other way and send them into the working corral.
So now we are in the working corral, right here on the back side of the barn, like I kind of talked about before. And it doesn't really look like it, but the entire herd, cows and calves, can fit in here. It is tight, but it can be done. Now, usually when you catch cattle in the working corral, you get maybe a couple that you don't need or you're grabbing everybody and you need to sort back a bunch of the ones that you don't want. Uh, say like for instance, if we were separating cows from calves because we wanna work them separately, what would happen is once you got everybody here in the working corral, I would then come back to this small gate and just start sorting cattle back. That might sound like it's hard, but it's really not because going back to what I was saying before, the cattle know that the way out of this corral is back through this little gate. So they have a natural tendency to want to go that way. So once you get the cattle that you want to work with here in the working corral, the next step is to get them into the squeeze chute. And in order to do that, we use the barn as a nice big solid fence and run them up the side of the barn back here into the tub alley. I made this gate solid because I had a lot of animals trying to just keep right on going and a couple of them almost made it. So now that I've got a solid sheet on this gate that hasn't been an issue anymore, it gives a nice visual barrier and just sort of like tells them to hit the brakes. And then more often than not, they will make a turn that way, which is what I want them to do. But every so often they do a 180. Um, and when that happens, I'm standing here and usually I can direct them back in here where I want them to go. From the tub alley, we just need to push them this way into the tub and once they're about here where I'm standing, they're as good as caught. So the tub closes down on them. And basically changes that tub from a, a pretty big open pen to now just a narrow alleyway. And there's really only one choice that you have. You gotta go through the chute. And if you're wondering, because occasionally people do ask, yes, I did build this tub. Uh, unfortunately, it was like three months before I started a YouTube channel, which is a bummer because this would have been an awesome video series. In fact, I was just thinking the other day of like, like, is there somewhere else I need a tub? Because I would actually really like to build one and show you guys how to do it. It's not actually that hard and you do need some special tools, but they're not that expensive. After I'm done working on the cows in the chute, I can open this gate and send them out into the big corral, or I can close this gate and send them back into the working corral, just depending on whatever I need to do with them. When my grandparents moved here in the 50s, I believe only a, a portion of the house was here, and then that garage where the chick brooders are was here. But the rest of this stuff, my grandpa built all of it. The hay barn, the hog barn, all the corrals, all the fencing. So basically he started from scratch. I think this property, they grew sorghum out here when they bought it. And like I say, none of the buildings were here. So I have not really changed grandpa's design that much. I've just kind of been going through and upgrading and modernizing things, but I'm basically sticking with the same layout that he decided on all those years ago. Is it the best, most efficient corral in the world? Probably not, but the cows are used to this layout and I'm used to this layout and we've been working with it here for however many years now and things seem to be going all right. So I guess we'll stick with it. Thanks for hanging out with me today, guys, and I hope I'll see you again on Farmer Tyler Ranch.